Hello? Hey, what's up? Hey, how you doing? Do Pretty I good. sound alright right? right? Uh, yeah, hold on. Okay. Might have to turn you up a little bit. Talk now? Uh, talking now? Does it sound right. okay? I yeah, that talking. seems... I mean, I could talk all day, it just won't be about anything interesting. <laughs> yeah, you're good. Thanks. Thanks for keeping me company during this. Yeah, no doubt. I don't know anything about the game, but I'll hang out, you know? Yeah, exactly. We'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it probably gets hella boring trying to do these things by yourself all the time. Yeah, I understand though, because it's like, uh, most people who like know shit about this game are interested in playing, so you know how it is. Yeah, I don't want to multitask. Having uh, Adobe Premiere problems at this moment, so I gotta... Uh, they make it very difficult to find information. Because I'm, I'm also on like a pirated copy, so I don't want to just be like, oh yeah, click on the help thing and have it connect to the thing. Ah, uh, yeah, of course, you know, just <laughs> sounds yeah. good. Yeah, so I got uh, Frank's going through shit. And he's telling me like, it's like fucking Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> Trying to figure out which driver for my video card I might need to enable hardware encoding because it eats 100% of my processor when I'm using it. Ah, oh, shit, yeah. Absolutely baffling. I hate the software. All right. Shit, I should hop on Fightcade. Uh, are you gonna spectate, or should I like screen share it? Um, the screen share will be easier, but I could spectate if you want. Whatever works for you. Yeah, I think I can handle screen sharing it. Yeah. Okay. And then I'll um find the bracket real quick. You're doing a whole Swiss thing. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is probably gonna run pretty smoothly. I mean, we've got five rounds. That uh, the thing that's gonna take the most time is like the top four, because first to three in this game takes a while. Oh, uh, okay. This yeah. is funny because I clicked on. I saw people talking about there being fourteen players, and I didn't realize it was Swiss. And so when I just clicked on the bracket, it just showed me on the left side four people, and I was like, wait, what? Oh yeah. Uh, it's good though, right? I mean, I've, I'm pretty much just aping uh, Riz One because he runs Swiss for all the Wednesday night fight stuff. Right, Street Fighter the movie was on that once. The people like it yep. there. Um, it seemed to go really well, and people were good because you know it's like whatever you put on the stream, people are watching. And the players don't care because they're playing. I'm not fucked with Swiss myself because um, it seems like in my brain like a nightmare for me to keep straight. Mm -hmm, yeah. But, you know, but it could just be me not knowing how to do it. So this yeah. would be cool. I usually, um, I think when um, you have less players, it's usually when Swiss, because you can stretch your stream out, there's more matches, but if you're not streaming all of the matches, it's the same thing, I guess. Yeah, and it's like, because uh, there's only like a few people who really have a lot of experience with this game, so it's good for learning. Yeah. Yeah, this will be cool. Learn a little bit of something today. Alright. I'm actually like playing music from YouTube right now, so once the song ends in a minute we'll start the bracket. If you're gonna do the screen share, you could just um, screen share your OBS, and you don't have to worry about 
screen sharing each fight cade window when you click on it because it'll just show me what's on your obs screen oh yeah okay that makes sense uh let me just see if everyone's checked in yeah no problem so we're missing slam town and miller to be hold on All right, uh, let me just screen share real quick. And yeah, I'll just give Slamtown and Miller a minute to answer. They're not in the lobby right now, so they're probably not playing. It makes me so angry. I mean, I've been guilty of doing it too, like by yeah. accident, like all of sleep. But it's like, like it's like kind of annoying. But uh, even like twelve entrance is pretty good for this. Yeah. Uh, there's just some people that are repeat offenders, and you're like, why do you even sign up? If I'm just gonna take you out of the bracket, like why even make me sit and wait? Yeah. All right. Miller Two B said he's on his way. Uh, I don't know if Slam Town. He's probably not here because he's offline. I'll give it until 8.02 and then we'll just call it. Okay. And it might change up who we have to play on stream first. Oh, well, worst case scenario, X the whole thing and play Wolves instead. And, you know. Dino Rex was a moment, but I don't know if Balls 3D is is the game for me. You know, I don't know if I could lab Balls. No, that's kind of the joke about it was, well, everybody thought Dino Rex was undoable, and then people started labbing it. Now let's show you a real undoable game. We're going to, um, we have plans to, like, roll it into other things, try to do more useful things instead of just a mean bracket out of it, but I could tell you about that later if you want. Even All brainstorming. Right. Sounds sick. All right. Uh, okay, I'm going to call it. Okay. So we've got, how many is that? We've got 14 entrants. Uh, Shave Ice just signed up. So the first round is still going to be Kajog versus Mibeador. Your current game says Ring of Destruction, by the way. All right, let me fix that. Sick. Hey. All right. Uh, I'm going to link everyone the uh, bracket in the lobby here just so you guys know what's going on. And then, yeah, as soon as people start playing, we're good to go. Okay. Do you normally get, like, a bracket of 14 people? Or is, um, like, what do you normally get on here? Uh, yeah, usually we get, like, maybe 8 to 10 people on good days. So this is definitely something different. Oh, that's rad. 8 right. to 10 is cool, though. Yeah, yeah. All right. So we've got, yeah, sides are right. Kajok versus Mibidor. Kajok's one of the big, like, proponents for this game. He's taken it to offline events with, like, uh, you know, on real hardware and then on Mr. later down the line. Real hardware must be wild for this. I've never even seen this in the wild. Yeah, he's, he's posted pics. It's like... Yeah, it's not something you like recognize in the wild for sure. That's awesome. 
This is always that game that I'd see the um like the ads for the Saturn version or something. Or the PlayStation oh, yeah. version, I don't remember. And I was always like, what is that weird game? So it's been really nice seeing this be played and see what it really looks like. Mm-hmm. And Hellion's a bit of a problem, isn't he? Yeah, so the big thing about this game is you can air block just about everything. Uh, and that like that kind of creates a problem with like any of the flying bots. So like Helion, uh Ooh, sick DP. I have seen the DP do crazy things in the corner. Like if they block it they get stuck and you can just keep doing it, right? Yeah. Uh you can like boost out of that. That's the thing, you gotta watch your boost meters in the corner. And every character has like a different design uh, on the display, which is really cool. Yeah, I really like the light bars in this game. That was one of the first things that struck me. I wish more games did things like that. Yeah. Oh, reversal super. Because yeah, Hellion has like infinite flight, if I remember correctly. It, it lasts a hell of a long time. You can like see it tick down, but you see how slowly it goes when he actually takes takes off. Imagine fighting on a space colony crashing into the Earth and just being like, yeah, no, the fight's more important. Ooh. Ah, no tech. And there's an explosion you see in everything anywhere in Mugen. Yeah, so the big thing about this game, or another thing is like, you can tech basically any knockdown. And if you do, you don't like eat OTGs from it. But if you if you miss your tech, you eat OTGs. You can take a lot of damage. We got um KO Kiss first time chatter asking if we're play uh we play on Fight Kate or on the Capcom collection. This is uh this is on Fight Kate. Yeah, the Capcom collection. I had some hope for it. I actually ended up buying like a month of PS Plus just to see how it was. I never. I maybe I found one or two matches. Yeah, it's the um, unfortunate truth of some of these collection games. It's like the main attraction for that is Darkstalker, so everyone, people are still on that, but yeah, not so much. Yeah, it's kind of like a bonus game. It's alright though, Fight like, hey, it's free. Yeah, and I mean, I definitely respect it if, you know, people find out about this game on the collection and that inspires them to look into it. Because if you go to like tournaments and stuff, you might find people playing the game. Yeah, I think that would help out a lot with tournament things where you can be on the up and up and have multiple copies of it and whatnot. And also for exposure, like you were saying, you know, people just pick up the collection for Darkstalkers. They see Cyberbots and they're like, oh, let me try that out. Oh, man, there's a whole scene. And definitely ain't nothing wrong with that. But, you know, Fightcade's here, Fightcade works, so that's what we've been using. People may recognize Blodia from the fist that comes out of Jin's Marvel vs. Capcom supers. Alright. Nice stuff. That's gonna be 2 0 for Gajok. I'm trying to think of a game that I've messed around with that I haven't seen mid trying. Alright. Yeah, he plays a lot of stuff. Uh, I know ABK is kind of his main game. Also, yeah, guys, if you had issues reporting your score, I forgot to hit start bracket. It's an easy mistake to make because that's like a separate step from validating the check-ins. <laughs> it's kind of weird, but everything should be good now. Miller2B says he won 2 -0. So we've got a few matches going on. I think I'm going to get uh, Hanbei versus Shave Ice. Hanbei is one of our uh, regulars. I mean, you can see he's from Brazil. That's the beautiful thing about Fight K2 is like, uh, the collection doesn't handle long distances as well, from what I've heard and experienced myself. And, yeah, they yeah. rarely have any uh, fight problems with connecting, no matter where they are, unless it's like on Wi-Fi. But I think it's also kind of on a game-by-game -game basis sometimes. Yeah, uh, it it kind of depends too. I like the people. I know as far as Cyberbots, people have been really happy with it. 
I know I did like a tournament last year where it was North and South America for Karnov's Revenge and people had some complaints. Yeah, Karnov's kind of a weird one if I remember what I was reading. I think um, Dan Kuga had something specific too, if I remember correctly. Yeah, Dan is like, on like a more obscure system, so it's kind of harder to emulate. I don't know, it's a whole mess. It's really convenient that it even works. What's the cool thing about all these games having Discord servers, though, is you could always just pop in and see what people have to tell you about it. Yeah, ooh, okay. By the way, as far as this match goes, uh, Hanbei is one of the few people who plays Riot, who's, again, playing the similar kind of runaway style as uh, as Helion, but he's got a kind of different skill set, and, like, uh, kind of the angle that his weapon fires at is really different. He seems like more of a horizontal fighter. Mm hmm so that lightning seems pretty red. Yeah, it's sick. It hits a lot with OTGs. It's kind of a knowledge check, but... You know, if you're not respecting it, it does a lot of damage. But yeah, the big thing Riot does is he has that rocket punch that goes forward in the air, and he can mix that in with his boost stalling to, like... He can definitely take 30-40 uh, seconds if he really feels like it. 34 right. seconds stalling, you mean? Yeah, 30 to 40 seconds of just staying up there if you don't, like... Some characters do have stuff they can shoot up there to, like, do chip damage and threaten him, but... Other than that, you just hang out. You think about your life a little bit. Yeah, that's the thing against these characters is... I think one of the Japanese players... Uh, actually, you probably know K-Doc, right? From, like, Street Fighter yeah. the movie and a bunch of other stuff. He, like, wrote a thread on it, and, like, one of the first posts was basically that you have to go for the jugular when these bots land. Or like on round start. This That's game just... seems told to be highly offensive anyway. Like you want to keep the pressure up, so it's interesting that the flying characters are so strong because they don't even have to engage with any of that. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm gonna put on Pipe Junior versus Thunder within because I don't think I think Thunder's a new player here. Oh, Reptos is one of the characters that can do the chip damage to the Flyers. Yeah. Nice. Good to know. The Killer B is a character I screwed with a very little bit when I was farting around with this. Yeah, it's funny. Killer B is, like, sort of hard to play at a high level, but the movement's really fun. Yeah, it's kind of what drew me to it. Yeah, they're a lot faster than Riot, and they otherwise, like, control pretty similarly. And the mines are hella useful. What's yeah, the mines were the fun part. Oh, okay, that's... Yeah, we're wrapping these sets up, so that was 2-0 for Pipe Jr. It is kind of tricky to, like, hop between the sets, maybe, but besides that, it's pretty good. You know, Swiss seems like a very interesting format, and I'm surprised I have never messed with it before. So it's been, uh, it's been really enlightening seeing people start adapting it. Yeah, all right. So that's our first round already, yeah. So again, that was like 10 minutes to get through that. So this is probably going to take like under an hour and then we're going to be in that top four. Right. Top four will take another hour. <laughs> yeah, maybe longer to be honest. Uh, all right. I'm trying to think who we haven't gotten that much stream time with yet. Uh, I did Kajok round one, so I think we're going to do S91 versus Pipe Junior. Now, S91, another one of our Brazilian regulars, He's plays a few characters. Uh, Reptos and Jackal, I think, are the most common. I don't know if he, who else he plays, actually, but it's not hard to like pick up a new character in this game. This game kind of has like an interesting, I could be talking out of pocket here, but a lot of the, I almost called the mobile suits, <laughs> a lot of the robots are kind of based on the same body type and then have different like accoutrements, it seems. So it kind of seems like if you pick like one that you're used to, you can uh, slide onto other ones and pick it up quicker. Yeah, and it's like the the lower body also kind of matters because it determines like their their air dash and stuff. Yeah, that's what I was meaning. Like, you pick, like, because, you know, someone will have the same lower body, but the arms and stuff are different. But 
Very interesting how they built this off of sprites and assets from a beat em up. Yeah, it's awesome. And like both, you know, the original is a really good game in its own right, but this is this is something else. Capcom likes to use every piece of the buffalo, and that's when you get all these really out of the box ideas, and those are the most fun. Yeah, no doubt. So Reptos is in a really interesting spot because he's he's got good offense and good zoning. The main thing is like he's got a commitment uh, with his projectiles because like another gimmick for a lot of characters that we might see in the later matches is you can you can charge your meter right and you can use that meter charge to like cancel moves. Anything that's special cancelable, you can charge cancel. Yeah, I was going to ask about that, because I saw it at the beginning of the round. But, um, I imagine once you manage to build up the meter, you can't really do that anymore until you spend the meter, right? Yeah. And, like, they can do that, you know, on projectiles, too, but Reptos is one of the few that can't. So his zoning kind of requires a commitment, but it can cover a lot of space. It's kind of balanced out because his health is a bit below average. Like... Characters do have different health in this game. Otherwise, though, here you've got two guys sitting on full meter with uh, two characters that have no trouble comboing into their supers. It's uh, I keep I keep waiting to. Like, in my psychology, I would have used the super already, so I'm watching these people, like, when are they going to use it? Yeah, right, and then you've got the other, like, yeah, th right there, the other way to use your meter is that, like, it's called Giga Crush. It's kind of like a burst, uh, in that, like, it's invincible and just gets them off you. That's what happens if you hit the same command to charge when your meter's already full, right? Yeah, just light and heavy. It's really interesting how much they pack into, like, a four-button control scheme. I think that's red, to be honest. It makes it quick to pick up. Yeah, it's so good. Hey, when you were young, the first time you saw a Street Fighter 2 control scheme with the six buttons, what was your reaction? Man, well, that was a lot before my time, right? You gotta oh, understand. Okay. But, yeah, no, picking up fighters, it was definitely like, I was, you know, I wasn't sure how to hold the stick. I was just, like, forgetting about my mediums all the time. So it's definitely like, yeah. You were being a kid, and you come from, like, two-button games, like the Simpsons arcade game or something. I remember seeing that, and I hadn't had a chance to play it when I first saw it. And then the whole car ride home, like, in my brain, I was like, what are those buttons all do? See, it could be a little daunting. So you get, like, a four-button game, and one of them is, like, a boost button or something. It's easier to wrap your head around as a new player. Uh, yeah, Scotty, you're going to play Thunder with it. And again, every match, the uh, thing about Swiss is you want to be playing as soon as we get to that round. Yeah, just hop in, find your opponent, and we'll just skip around and spectate. And you said oh. top four, we're going to stream, right? Mm -hmm. Ooh. So, yeah, every character... Oh, damn. <laughs> Four oh. throws in a row? Alright. Yeah, a lot have been there, right? So, everyone can uh, OTG with throw to begin with. But Reptos has a kind of gimmick with his throw where a, uh, he can do it in the air, so he can catch you out of the air with it. But there, there's like kind of a movement trick to it where you, if you... You can't grab someone while you're in the middle of a boost, right? You have to stop your boost. So if Reptos, like, stops his boost and then does a throw immediately, he'll actually be able to throw you. Like, if he's in the air and you're on the ground, he'll be able to throw you. Oh, that's wild. <laughs> yeah, that shit is kind of terrifying. So oh, here we go again. That, like, builds a lot of his offense right there because he actually doesn't have any low-hitting buttons, right? You can block high against him safely, but he does have the command grab, so... That's like core to his function as a character. It's really funny. He's like a really unorthodox grappler, sort of. Yeah, and like this game has a, a more standard grappler who's also top tier. That's Vice. I don't know if we'll see him this bracket. 
Oh yeah, Vice is the one with the tank treads and the big clamp arm, right? Yeah. He's he's cool as hell and you like you look at him and you know that's what he does. He just yep. also has the bonus of having homing missiles because he, he kinda he won the lottery with that. Won the uh, designer bias lottery. <laughs> yeah, it's like I wonder if they've ever done an interview where they like explain how they decided to make the final bot designs for this, because there were a lot of moving parts. Oh, oh, that was a really good trade for S91. You know what I'd love to see is the scratch designs, like the ones that didn't make it into the game. Yeah. Uh, in like, going into MAME and doing nerd stuff to find the hitboxes, I found out there's like cheats to force characters, and the like internal listing actually puts Killer B at the end after like the final boss, so that makes me think like, you know, how many designs did they plan to have and where they end up. Yeah, they probably had like extra time and they were like, we could squeeze one more. And it's weird because like when you get the selection, you have the like the standard bodies and then you have like three variants for each. So it's like, was there going to be an imbalanced roster there? Is... And there's also on the other the flip side of that, there could be that they had the characters all planned, but Killer B is the last one that got worked on. Mm, yeah. But then again, it's like, why would that be the last one? I don't know. That's weird. All right, sick. That was 2-1 for S91. Good match. It could also be one of the bosses was supposed to be a playable character, and they changed that. Yeah. You can select all the bosses, but I they might have also waffled on that one. Who knows? Because they have some really obscure codes. Probably not the hardest, but it's just like you wouldn't find those out by accident. Alright, I'm going to put on OG Corn Phase versus Luminati, because I don't think we've seen him yet. Luminati. I was thinking like Illuminati, and then I saw yeah. it was spelled, and was like, oh, I don't think that's a joke. I think I'm thinking too far. Ooh, okay, this is 1-1, one, one. yeah. We're catching like the last moments of this set. We haven't seen Lightning yet. He's he's very cool. He has like the standard missiles that fall, go at a fixed angle. Thing, but I don't think I've ever seen Lightning. Like, I know we ran a Frog Crew tournament for it, and I played some casuals and stuff, but I don't think anybody picked him. I can't remember. Yeah, Lightning's a little clunky. He's, like, large. His speed's decent, but he's only got, like, as a consequence of the treads, he's only got one air dash. And besides that, he's kind of tricky because he both, like, wants Missos to help open people up, but he wants them for his offense, too. Oh, this is neck and neck. I think if this times yeah, this out, we might tie. This could be anybody's. Oh. Someone... Oh. Yeah, I know it's some stray thing was gonna hit somebody. That was that was cool though. That was that was tight. Been a lot of blow to you today. Is that normal? Uh, yeah, we have like some. I mean, we have two pretty prominent ones in OG Cornflakes and Pipe Junior. And he's like a good uh, all-around character. He doesn't like fall off. And like theoretically, he's supposed to be considered like the review of the game or something, right? Yeah, I think that's. Oh, hold on! They just finished playing. Uh, I accidentally went into that set that they just finished playing. All right, but yeah, he's supposed to be an all-arounder. Uh, it's funny. Uh, like, there's not a lot of uh, meterless reversals in this game, but Blodia has one because he has a DP. It's right. says Thunder with Wind took the th Thunder Within took that two zero. Uh, all right, that's been reported. Cool. <laughs> Yo, man, fuck it. Learning is secondary in the tournament. Hell yeah. <laughs> all right. So we got. I actually don't think I've seen Miller two B on stream, and he's pretty good. So I'm gonna put him up next. And yeah, everyone else in round three can play now. 
We're already on round three of the Swiss, huh? Yeah. You're right. This does go quick. Yeah, I kind of dig this. This is interesting. Yeah, I think it's really convenient because again, there's no, no one's like waiting, waiting for their match to be open. Yeah, it's kind of a thing with some of the brackets is you, at least in my experience, you uh, you go 0-2 oh, immediately and then you sit and you wait. Then it's like, alright, well, what do I do? Do I just sit here? Do I multitask? What if I get busy? Yeah, it's unless, unless you're like able to join commentary and shoot this shit, it's kind of Kind of a bad experience, but I'm trying to think of who else I know who does Swiss. I know uh, Guardian has always been doing it for his mystery stuff, which is nice. The yeah, Guardian did it for a uh, Street Fighter the movie as well. The, they're doing a Street Fighter the movie tournament every Wednesday this Ooh. month, and hell yeah, last yeah the last one I was in, it was interesting. Ah oh, damn, I think that might have chipped him out. I, yeah. All right, card. But yeah, we've we've seen a lot of like new bots every match, which is nice. Uh, Jackal, again, Jackal's got some stuff in common with. Uh, he's got the like spider legs like Tarantula, so his movement's a little different. He's got those uh, air jumps. He's doing a good job of keeping Hellion out of the air. And what we saw before, Jackal Super is, again, one of the easier ones to confirm into. It's pretty fast. It has like a blind spot up close, but usually if you... Oh man, he almost had it there. It's possible to combo off uh, just his light buttons. Damn, how in. Oh, are you seeing a switch? There we go. Yeah, Tarantula is Miller's main. I guess he decided to switch just because of like the common tools they have. But Tarantula's also got that big arm, and that helps him a lot. That's pretty much his bread and butter. Is like the uh, the grab, or it's a hit grab, but it covers a lot of different angles. So we just backstepped and jumped over that whole missile, huh? Yep. Oh, nice. Going up. Yeah, uh, Tarantula actually does link off that dashing light into DP. That was a that was a whole change of pace right there. That was wild. Yeah, I love how the it's announcer. Cool. Ooh, yeah. So when he lands that, he has like a bit of time to confirm and do an input. It's like quarter circle back uh, attack, and that does the missile follow up. That does a little more damage. It's really cool. His tarantula switch is paying off. Damn. Oh, oh! I thought that was it. Thought yeah, I thought that was it too. I think they thought that too, because they just chilled for a minute. Right, Miller tied it up instantly. Ooh. What's James going to do? Oh, is James switching too? Okay, no. no. Where's all the trick? And I mean, obviously, you know, there's character comfort, but I think when you're playing one of the bosses, or at least one, one of the two bosses that are important, because there's like four bosses, but one of them is Ban, that's Warlock, the final boss. And one of them is Gates, who's actually bottom tier, because he's like one of the common enemies from the beat-em-up. Oh, yeah, I saw y'all talking about that in the server. You were saying that because he's really slow and mobility is super important in this game. Yeah, and like... Gates in general just like doesn't have much offense because like his normals all do like bounce off you kind of thing. Uh, he's got a fireball that stuns you, but it's really slow to start up. He's just a weird gimmick character.
But yeah, Miller's showing what makes Durantula so effective is just his way to move around and kind of strike at you from different angles like that. Like that grab right there. Yeah, and he's just able to keep himself mostly safe while doing that. Oh, okay, missed his throw by a little bit. Oh, nice. Alright, we'll just, uh, just go under them and do the, um... I forgot what it's called, I almost called it a boost attack. Yeah, the... We just call it Burst for short, because it's mostly the same. I mean, you can't okay. actually break hits done with it, but... It's like a nice shorthand. Because it's your... it's anti-air, it's invincible. Uh, does a job. Ooh. Very impressive getting around all of those zoning options. But yeah, that tarantula switch worked out definitely. Yeah, I'm like... I know for a fact that <clears throat> that's his main, so it makes a lot of sense. That says tarantula moving. You know, that, that made that character look awesome. That was fun to see. All right. Uh, round four, I think we're going to get... Actually, I don't think we've seen uh, Scuddy versus Gold Pilot, so I'll just do that. Because we've definitely got most of like the top players on stream. Yo, know, what if we ran Dino Rex as Swiss? Yeah, it's like. That that raises an interesting point of like how quickly would the like Dino Rex Swiss go? And like would that be into like the top thirty two or would that would that be something different? I was gonna run um not Swiss, but I was gonna do the same format where I was gonna have people play all of their matches and I just click on whichever ones I want and that kinda ended up happening anyway in my pool, but it's funny to think of the idea of not only have to just play through your opponents, but you have to play against everybody. Yeah. I don't think people would have wanted to do that. Just like a giant round robin. That would have been a disaster. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been like, no, too much. All right. So we are seeing Vice. The main thing with Vice that, like, I think the first thing you want to start doing is just using jump L a lot. That's a, just a ridiculous button. It's got long range. It has three hits, I believe. And, like, you can just tick into command grab off that. Just not letting him out of the corner, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> gotta grab, too. Yeah. I think the first thing that, like, trips people up about Vice is he's got, like, the DP motion, and he's got a quarter circle forward, and that quarter circle forward's not a grab. Uh, it's just a hit, and it's a little unsafe on block, so you want to be clean with your inputs. Is that what just happened there, or nah? Nah, alright, these are regular throws. But yeah, I don't, obviously, you know, it's easy to say this, but yeah, more command grabs is Vice. Uh, he has a lot of, like, different option selects or ways to buffer it. Like, you can do, you can, like, boost forward and then hit down and boost again and then down forward to complete the motion and stuff like that. Probably partitioning? Yeah, pretty much. Just, like, buffering the motion behind your movement and stuff like that. Okay, switch to lightning. That's pretty interesting. Oh yeah, you can lose your arm, which we haven't seen happen too often, but you either take enough damage because you have that gauge above your life bar, or you can get hit out of your charge, and that'll just make you instantly lose it.
All right, this is working out for Scuddy so far. Lightning has a pretty high damage output, and his his like regular target combo knocks down, so that's really useful. Now, if you lose your arm, do you just like lose access to some of your specials, or like what does that? What else does that do? Yeah, so it's some specials, and probably the worst part is like you lose access to your throw, so you want to get that back pretty quickly. Uh, like the convenient thing is, I mean, first of all, you don't have to pick it up really. You just kind of walk over it, right? And just like, oh, good burst. And yeah, if it ends up off screen for like a, a few seconds, it'll just drop right above you just to make sure you get it back. Well, that was nice of them. Yeah. It basically solves, like, all the Sam Show problems, because, again, this game is so fast that you can't really, like, secure a knockdown and then go pick up your weapon. What do you oh. mean by Sam Show problems? Like, people hovering over the weapon, not letting you get it and stuff? Yeah, that or, like, getting bad luck and having it, like, knock off screen, right? Because that happens sometimes. Uh, kind of depends on which Sam Show game you're playing, though. Some of them, like, you can just walk out and the camera will zoom back. It's funny, like in Sam Show uh, 4, specifically people will just let you pick your weapon back up. That's just kind of the culture around the game. <laughs> the gentlemen's. Yeah, I'm not kidding. That's like, uh, I think someone put out a guide pretty recently that said, yeah, that's just what they do. Well, that's, that's, that's very nice of them. Give a long way from throwing is cheap in the arcade days. Yep. Okay, appreciate Golden Pilot. Uh, sorry, just Gold Pilot. I'm like mixing them up with maybe Golden Shades, like a prominent Karnoff player. But uh, ooh, yeah, that jab is putting in a lot of work. But yeah, I do like that Gold Pilot's doing like the tarantula pressure with charge cancels because that's. That's pretty big for Tarantulas, having a uh, dashing heavy, which is has a few hits and is charge cancelable. So there's a lot of ways to mix it up. Uh, I'll put on Pipe Jr. versus Kajok just to see where they're at. Oh, we got a bloaty a mirror. Oh, it looks like we just got into it too. Yeah, it's nice. Oh, wow. Oh, sick mix-ups. Yeah, I think in general, Pipe's like a more defensive player, but again, taking advantage of those spots is really important. Ooh. All right, that was a sneaky dashing age. You look at the health, though. Yeah. It was such a close game. I feel like there's kind of a sliding scale of, like, Blodia players here, where it's like, Kajog's uh, probably the most balanced. OG Cornflakes is really offensive, and Pipe Jr. is a bit more defensive. I think that's really cool when characters are flexible like that and still interesting. And especially if the uh, the proverbial Ryu of your game is capable of that. Yeah, for sure. Like uh, when it doesn't feel like you're playing the character wrong because you have a different style. A lot of games kind of lack that. He's just got a really balanced toolkit and that helps. Uh, I don't think I ever saw what Mibedo and Shaved Ice, uh, what their score was. Let me see if uh, they posted. Let me see if I can scroll up. No, I don't think it got reported. Yeah, I just tag them in the fight gate about it.
Ooh, all right. Yeah. Yeah, you can see how much OG Cornflakes just likes to stay on them once he, especially once he gets you cornered, but he was a little slow there and ended up trading. Like, he will no. also shoot that weapon once in a while, but it's just mostly to, to throw your game off. So the overlay says it's mid right now, so it was throwing me off a little bit when you said that. Uh, oh, all right, my bad. Is that, uh, are you typing that in on the fly, or you have that set up where Fight Key does it for you? I type that in on the fly, yeah. Hit me up when you got a free man. Let me show you how to get Fight Key to do it. Make All your right. life a lot easier. Sick. Because, yeah, I just use uh, Scoreboard Edit because I've been using that. And I don't yeah. I don't like learning new stream tech. <laughs> I, um, because what happens to me is I get sidetracked because I'm really bad at, um, if I'm not, like, on point with multitasking, where if you distract me, I don't get thrown off, I will just forget names. Yeah. So I could see that, like, if you have to edit it for everything with something like this, that would be a nightmare. Oh. Okay, good tech. If you didn't... I mean, that's not a... Oh, nice. Good weapon shot there. It's not, like, a hard tech to hit on Reptos. Uh, the move's actually called Violent Win. It's cool as hell. But, uh, yeah, it's not hard to tech Violent Win, but if you miss it, he... Does a lot of damage. I think Reptos is a very cool character. I didn't understand how they worked when I was screwing around with this game, so it's really cool to see it play yeah. properly. He's just this ultimate balanced character. I feel like he's... I'm actually trying to think of who to compare him to in, like, Street Fighter. It just doesn't really work, right? Yeah, this no, game, it's... it's anime. It's a little too anime for that. Oh, good catch. Right? Yeah, this is this is really, really tense right now. And it's not like they're down to the last hit or anything. They're just really playing fast. No, they're playing for space. Ooh, all right. Like Bloody has been really good about um knowing to backdash but not get cornered. Yeah, this has been wild. Ooh, oh, that's it. <laughs> well, sometimes you just get dunked. Yeah, he was, and like the timeout was right there on the table. There were five seconds left. What a what a nail biter of a set right there. <laughs> that was red. Yeah, like Kajok said, clock. That's always you've always got to keep that in mind. Even if you look up and you see like there's twenty seconds left. Uh, you know, you got to start thinking about that. So yeah, there we have that, 2-1. So round 5. Uh, now, th by default, Swiss starts at 4 rounds, but I saw, like, once I saw 12 people hit, I was like, yeah, I think 5 is fair enough to actually, like, determine where everyone's at. So this is round 5. This is going to be the last one until we, uh, before top 4. Right. Trying to think. So everybody plays we... against each other and then it tallies wins and losses, and that's how it determines like, the score system. Mm -hmm, yeah. Uh, okay. There's like a different, uh, and ties are worth half a point. I don't think, I don't think that's going to come out, come up pretty much ever, but just in case there's like a tie. Or you can use that to handle DQs if people like show up and then have to leave. I've had that happen once. The hell of an interesting format. Yep. All right. I couldn't imagine trying to do it for fist fight in a movie, but it'd be funny. They will do that for April Fools. Nice. Watch everybody by the end of the night. They're all drinking and smoking, and they're like, "I don't understand what the brackets telling me." <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. You just you just have to get lost in it. I mean, it's not that hard to do with like, because the the way with like challenge works and probably Smash GG too. It'll it'll just tell you you know. This is this round, and then you, you just play next round. But yeah, it's definitely different from like double elimination. I think we're going to get Miller 2 Beaver to shave ice on this one. Sounds good.
And yeah, this is the last one uh, before top four. All right, shave ice on the left, Miller on the right. You hit this clock out perfectly. Read about an hour. Yeah, by the time this one is done, it makes sense. All right, Miller kind of going in. It looks like a pretty, uh, pretty good button there. Omega red looking thing. Yeah, it's hella useful. That was even trying to catch. I was catching them when they were trying to jump back. Sorry, but we got the ground game. Yeah. <laughs> Got a lot of use out of that button, wow. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, he's just gonna keep doing yo. it. Alright, yo, if it works, it works. Don't get dunked though. Yeah, number one thing for uh for Reptos, his crouching light is really good for getting them off you. Cause he kinda like extends in a weird way and it's pretty hard for them to throw Yoda that. Okay, yeah, Chip is starting to be a threat. But you can see that, like, vertical laser takes a long time to come out. Oh, my that god. Is, is the worst. Yeah, they both used it. Actually, I can't even remember who used it first. I think it was Reptos, but they were just at, like, this weird range where his hit first. Those aren't all created equal either, right? Yeah, definitely. Now oh, this is so funny. <laughs> it's 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 kind of tricky. I mean, this game does actually have like a a very low key guard cancel mechanic going on because you can you can boost out of the like tail end of the block stun. It's kind of tricky to time, but if you learn how to do it, it's really useful. Oh man. It was, a, yeah. it was a hell of a thing, that button. Man, I'm just like looking at the match you know. I don't know how we got almost... We got like 140 from one person. So I haven't like felt the need to shill it all tournament. What's we're, it at uh, right now? It's at it 150. It was at 150 last I checked. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're eating good tonight. Yes, that's not bad for a bi-weekly, yo. So shout outs to everybody that did that. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. My plan's been to do these like once a month for different games, so I'll do like this month will be Cyberbots, next month I'll probably spend it on Dankuga. Just because I don't want to tire people out by doing it too often. You're talking about doing like the Matcherino thing or? Yeah. Yeah, because Cyberbots is going to be by Wheelie as long as people keep showing up for it. It's been pretty good. It's actually a pretty cool idea. You rotate out one of the games that you run as being the Matcherino game for the month. Yeah. That's that's yeah, it's not bad. That's cool. It just it just happens that like uh Alex Akami's charity thing is coming up in October, so I probably won't do something that month and then uh Car November is gonna be the big thing. And I'll figure out what the like rotation looks like after that. The Car November is gonna be wild. Yeah. I like how we I... have this nice little calendar of things coming up. Yeah, for sure. I've been thinking about like what to do for Karnov and like I've always wanted to start up like regular tournaments for that, but they never they never really took off. Yeah, That's... I think um Charles, uh, to be more crazy, likes to try to watch Karnov for twenty four hours every year. And I know last year we ended up like doing like a live reading of a script, so like we were talking to the movie. So I wonder what <laughs> kind of crazy thing they're gonna come up with for this year. Nice. All right. Yeah, I think um thing too about people when you're saying like people don't stick around for Karnov too much is that um like you get a couple of dedicated people and it's not necessarily about wanting to grow it, but it's about like really showing like here's what this game's capable of. Try to get people to mess with it. Yeah. I don't know, I've been thinking I knew... a lot about that lately. 
I think, like, yeah, because Karnov is a really solid game, to be honest. So I'll always be like, you know, this game should have regular tournaments. It should have kind of the a good reputation, you know, the way like uh, Street Fighter 2 does. I think it's equally good of a game. I think what you get is you get a lot of people who aren't from New Year, and they just, you know, that's the one with the lawsuit, yada, yada, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, and it's like, it's not, that's that's the first game, the one that no one plays because it actually does kind of suck. Yeah, <laughs> people don't know the difference. I, also, I entered one mystery bracket where somebody thought Karnov's Revenge and Fighter's History Dynamite were two different games and we had to play it twice, so... Oh, hell yeah. That, I mean, that sounds good to me. Alright, uh... It's Kajak playing Swordsman this time. This is a different character. Nice. Yeah, the sword is a huge asset for, like, chipping people out because it just covers all, all the way up in the air like that. It's an interesting switch. I wonder if he either he lost his blow or he just wanted to... Try this out versus Reptos, because the extra range Swordsman has does have help him compete a lot. I think him and Blody are both kind of like middle of the pack characters, but they've got their own gimmicks. I mean, it's working out now. Oh, it's oh, a that very was sick. big sword! Oh my! Yeah, you get to charge it up. All right, good blocks. Oh no, yeah, committed to shooting out that mine there and got caught. It's gonna be 2 0 for S91. Alright. So that's uh, that's the whole Swiss bracket. I'm gonna end it and see what the results are. All right, our top four is gonna be S91, OG Cornflakes, Illuminati, and Kajok. So let me go and create that uh, top four, and we're gonna get into it. Oh, that's how you've do okay. Yeah, there's no, at least uh, the like way two two stage tournaments work on challenge. There's no like off to do Swiss and then. Uh, double limb or something like that. It's only like round robin, single limb, double limb. Those are your only options. I don't know why it works like that, but it's it's that or Smash GG. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> Smash GG is a platform for like big tournaments with you know ten, twenty games, not uh, you know single games. I was trying to. Uh... I couldn't even remember my login info for Smash GG yesterday. I was trying to log in so I could play Clay Fighter, and it took me like 25 minutes and then to, to find it and reset my password. And then any password I was putting into it, it was like, no, that's not good enough. And I was just like, I can't believe this. And then I couldn't even find like the rules page. I don't know. I hear, I hear good things about it. I just, I hate using it. Yeah, it's... It's a little weird. Right. I know it's so, really good if you have gigantic pools, I've been told. Mm hmm Because it like yeah, and if you've got multiple games you can you can check conflict and schedules and stuff like that where you kinda have to do that manually on challenge. Well, you got a podcast coming up, according to the slider. Yeah, I started... I did one uh, last month about, like, fighting game balance and how, you know, people... I think people over-exaggerate how poorly old fighters are balanced. Even, like, you know... And Heather was on that, so she had a lot to say about ST, and we talked about, like, more obscure games, too. And, like, especially when you're, like, discovering a game, a lot of these older games are unexplored, and it looks like something's overpowered, and it's not. So, you know... Fantastic. Right. Yeah, so that one's already up on YouTube. The second episode is going to be about, like, you know, 
meme moves and like the prevalence of stuff like you know overrating Carnell's balloon or like characters you know talking about i think we're even going to talk about smash maybe you know i'm not i'm not like an elitist about that i don't really follow or play smash anymore but i think like that's a game where people kind of think you know it's all about the top tiers or it's all about you know these these moves or and stuff like you know this is cheap or whatever it's it's hard to like explain but it's it's that's the thing about podcasts you can just kind of talk shit and it all kind kind of comes together anyway we're gonna get this top four bracket going First up is going to be S91 versus Kajok. And yeah, this is all going to be first to three. Really like these flyers you've made. Yeah, it's sick. I've had a lot of fun making them. All right, I think we're ready. Ooh, okay. Right. Kajak going with Vice. This is always a good character to keep in your rotation. Oh, it's, uh, it's both of the grapplers. Yeah. Right. Let's see what's going on here. He's taking a lot of damage right now, but once he gets in, oh, yeah, that, that might oh be my. it. Oh. oh, okay, never mind. Let's just go back and forth with these. I did a decent little chunk of damage there. Yeah, no doubt. And he... The main thing is one he can use it in the air as well, so you're never you're never really safe, right? And yeah, it's got a a ton of range too. Well, I love the name in the Twitch chat, Uncle Bungle Wake Up Super. <laughs> yeah, he's been, he's been showing up in a lot of our streams, right? Appreciate it. Yeah. You really speak to us. Oh, there's there it is. Yeah, the air version of that is so scary. Oh, that's okay. all right. Reptos has one too. Yep, that was really sick from S91. That was a very cool match to see. Yeah, this matchup. I mean, these characters are really fun to watch. But yeah, I mean, I feel the same way. But I will not like. Just out of like interest of community building and shit, I will not like make fun of someone for buying the game and hoping it would be more active. It's just like, yeah, that's that's what you get with like collections. Uh, if there were more like, you know, if they had replay takeover, which is something that like Guilty Gear Plus R has, it's been huge for that game's development, but that Fight Gate doesn't have. Yeah, I come off as abrasive on a lot of that shit, but at the end of the day, what it really is to me is just when they make these collections, I want to see them go all out on them. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's Give like, Give me otherwise. a reason to spend that money. Yeah, it's just, it's not a great value. I mean, on its face, like, it, yeah, like, you've got, like, you know, 10 games for $40-ish, that's pretty good, but it's like, if you're into fighting games, you've got Fight Kate. <laughs> so it's kind of the thing with it, is I feel like, they do the bare minimum and then make it out like they're doing us a big favor. But what I like, if I'm making, if I'm remaking a game, or I'm well, not even remaking, but if I have a like a second crack at something that I've done previously, I want to yeah. look at it and go, now that I've had all this time and this hindsight, what would I do to add more value to this thing? Is what I would be treating it like. Yeah, because it's like otherwise, why make a new one and not just put the old one on like the current PS4 store or whatever? And yeah, yeah Miller, I. Mean, I, I I thought so, but I got the collection on PS4 and I got PS Plus for like the month of July and that I didn't see much action on Cyberbots. I would like put up uh, Cyberbots and Hyper Street Fighter 2 just to like have something else in case and I get matches in Hyper Hyper Street Fighter 2 and not Cyberbots. <laughs> I think it's the bundling aspect. 
like if you throw the thing up on like you said like PSN for a couple bucks, people who want it will buy it, and then you'll naturally have the community of people playing it. But when you just throw a bundle together, people are buying it for different reasons, and they're not. Even... You know, you get the couple of people, and like you said, like you pop on, and then you don't see anybody playing it, so you go back to what has the thing. Ooh. All right. I think there were a series of like pretty brave plays out there from S91. Just there was that one moment where he like dashed in with Jump L and managed to stop uh, Kajok from releasing the sword too early. Yeah, you fight Kaders ago because you know they'll never re release shit like Hokuto Ken again. Yeah. Licensed games are in such a weird spot because it's like even. Even if they still have the license, or even if it's not that hard for them to get, they just won't bother. It's kind of, I mean, we, I was, I was complaining about Parsec the other day with like an audio issue, and it was kind of, we got into the discussion, it was like, you know, with all the, with whatever you want to say about, like, the, the state of the games industry or whatever, like, the fact that we can have a thing like Parsec or Fightcade exist is phenomenal, especially nowadays, like... If you told me a couple years ago I could just log into a program and play any of these games, like, wow. Right, yeah, and it's like, Fightgate has been around since, like, 2010, maybe 2008, I don't remember, but... I mean, there's been, it's been in some form or another, like, uh, GGPO or Supercade or whatever, but... It's really seen some I... improvements recently. Like, even having just the UI and the interface that it has now with the lobbies and stuff is nice. Like, a lot of these games back in the day it used to be, like, you had to be really dedicated because you had to figure out how to do the networking. Mm, and yes. I'm not a smart person, so... We're talking, like, uh, Kylera days, right? Stuff yeah, like, like that. I, yeah, stuff like that. I remember trying to play Alpha 2 against somebody one day, and it was like, all right, log into your router and screw with all this stuff. And I was like, I don't... I can't yeah. do that. <laughs> like, Yeah, like, port forwarding, what the hell? I've never had to port forward. Yo, what's up? Let me turn you up a little bit. Go ahead. Hello? Uh, you're coming through clearly. What's up? Sorry. Um, oh, oh, uh, I've been interesting. Just, uh, just noticed you guys were chilling. Yeah, like we're hanging out. Yeah. I'm actually streaming in tournament right now, so if you feel like being a part of that. Hmm. We're actually in the like top four, so we're we're rounding things out. So the way I did it was like uh, do like a Swiss bracket to figure out the placings, and then put that into top four. Hmm. Kind of interesting because it lets people play a lot more, so it's good for like high and low levels altogether. No it's, so cool to has, it's so cool that this game has got you know new life, just the Discord and the uh, fight game and all that. Yeah, absolutely. It's really cool. I I know what he's I know what he's talking about when it comes to like the fake it thing. It used to be mental. Even so much as like just getting ROMs for the thing to even work was like mega sketchy. The fact there are JSONs and you just you just yeah. enter the room and boom, done. The oh. fact that it's so uh, accessible now, I guess, is the thing. Oh god, yeah, it's so good. So and, you know, shout-outs to the people that got that Jason working, by the way, because I know that oh, was yes. not a simple thing. Yeah, big, it always, like, big. ran into issues, right? It would go down sometimes. Yeah, I know oh, a lot no. of people behind the scenes and the working in the shadows were doing a lot of hard work for that to keep that up and running, too. So I don't know if they want to be named named here, but I'll just say thank you, Mysterious Benefactors. <laughs> also, shout-outs to Crab with the raid. Oh, Dang, I didn't realize because I was looking at the uh, my little setup Sorry. here. Sorry, cool. I got you. Much appreciated, Crab. Thank you for the support, and thank you for being awesome and hosting all the ACP stuff. I really wish I could, you know, hop down to uh, first attack PR. I'll probably have to save up for that next year. We'll see. Get Alex Alchemy to pay for it with all that Dino Rex money. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> It's it's funny to joke about, but for real, that did end up going to charity. At least the, the like, what is it, 1.2k? Because once they got yeah. to 1,000, they were like, all right, we're capping this. Because we don't want people to make, like, we don't want one person to make $1,000 off Dynarex. That'd be too much. Top 8 all got a payout, and then 
over half of that prize pool, which was like that ridiculous number. It was like two something. Yeah. Yeah, like so, like good, like oh, twelve hundred dollars went into charity, both for um, an actual Oof. like a charity charity, and for members of the community that needed it the most. Yep. And that's uh, that's good. A lot of people have been looking at that, like, why is Dino Rex so big? And I was like, because you could do good things with it. Like, we're all helping each other, you know. It is also, though, very funny to imagine, like, Alex Alchemy with a briefcase full of money, like, getting into a helicopter and escaping, though. <laughs> the Kusoge big business they were warning you about. Yeah. <laughs> this is greedy yeah. TOs. So far, uh, man, this has been one hell of a match. Just, like, Kajak really keeping it together with the movement. He's been playing pretty hard to catch like Reptos can do a lot of damage off off like a simple light heavy combo and so far S91 hasn't gotten a good clean hit on him they're doing a fantastic job of controlling space and playing defense with swordsman right now yeah there's like he's using that stage space so well and Oh, oh man. Oh, that was devious. Oh, what with the burst. It was nice. Red burst right in there. Yeah, so that's going to be a very close 3 1 for Kajok. It was crazy because, like, yeah, after that first match, uh, things weren't looking so hot, but the switch to Swords Man really helped. You know, I'd switch to Swordsman and change the whole thing. Sorry, what's up? Now we've been talking over you a little bit. Sorry about that. All right. So that's reported. Uh, we're going to get OG Cornflakes versus Luminati up next. As for a bit of background, I know Lou to play HNK. I don't know what other games he plays besides this and HNK, but that's it's already a really good lineup. <laughs> uh, ooh, someone playing a first to ten. Nice. Saw that, and I thought that was part of us for a minute. Yeah, I, I, like did. Two two I was like, why did they do a first to ten? Oh, it's not Wait. even for us. <laughs> the numbers don't <laughs> add up. <laughs> you got another raid for Cyberbots. Oh, sick. Symbian Gaming with 14 folks. Oh, and sent yo, that's my locals. What's up, guys? This is yo. Polar Bear. I, uh, to be honest, I don't pop by too often just because I, like, can't stay the whole night. And, but I do show up from time to time, hope people to, hope to get people to play my, you know, obscure games like this one, Cyberbots. And, you know, you guys are going to want to keep watching because this is the top four. We're doing all uh, first to three sets from now on. And this is about to just... You're going to see some crazy movement in this game for like 1995. Really weird to think oh. about. Like Capcom's fighting game output in the 90s was just top notch. Fucking insane. Man. The homing missile. So like there was yeah. this, and there was x and then there was Night Warriors. Oh, yeah, this yeah. is right when they were getting on their uh, let's try to make anime games thing. Yeah, this was like, I, I mentioned it in my video specifically, like, there was Super Turbo and Alpha 1, and between that, you had, yeah, X-Men Coda that was mentioned, uh, two Darkstalkers games, and this, and Ring of Destruction as well. Wait, two of them? Uh, yeah, Darkstalkers 1 and 2 came out before uh, Alpha. Oh, I was gonna say, because, like, I know, I know, many, I know DS1 came out in 94. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I thought we were just sticking to 95 or whatever. Yeah, because Alpha, Alpha was in like late 95. I'm trying to remember when. Like, definitely later half. Hmm. You're just saying this game came out on 420 in 1994. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> Fuck you. Anybody that <laughs> plays this, it's high level play. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> uh, I level play. Uh, 
Eight. Oh, 95. Ooh. All right, well, still on 420, though, right? That was, that was actually... I loved that. Yeah, OG Cornflakes, uh, he goes in. He knows the dirt with his character. I feel like once he like had charge canceling explained to him, he was like, all right, you know, this is my calling right here. And it's great because like you get to make your sweep plus on block and you just get to play your game. The sweep being plus on block. Hell yeah. It's great. It's it's really funny because like once you get full meter, suddenly you lose that option and you got to you got to think about how you want to spend that. I kind of like the idea of building a meter being actually spending a resource. Yeah, it's... I'm trying to think of what else is, like, close to that. I guess, appropriately enough, like, Robokai's Overheat from uh, Plus R, and, like... Or whatever whatever Guilty Gear game he first appeared in. Plus R is the one people actually play now. Right? Like, XX Slash, yeah. or whatever. I think, yeah, I think the first one was uh, XX Reload. Or slash slashes reload reloads like a later version of it, right? I don't know. That stuff gets confusing to me. <laughs> yeah, p people will talk about like the dark stalkers or vampire thing being confusing, but that one, there's only three games there, and then like Savior Two and Hunter Two, which are kind of yeah, they're not good, but well, whatever. No. Ooh, oh, that was all this Guilty Gear, and then there's like Guilty Gear X, and then plus R and accent core and fucking what it's hard to keep straight but i think if you're like a guilty player like you play it regularly that's probably not that hard no of course of course it's I mean, like people don't know about hyper fighting like, versus turbo what? for street fighter 2 everyone everyone knows about isuka though because that game's weird as fuck and it's basically like smash it's because you've got funny. four players yeah the game has a button to turn around if somebody jumps over you you don't turn around normally yeah, it's it's crazy because then you just like you can turn around and backdash at them, and that's that's actually how you play Potemkin in that game because his yep. backdash is insane. All right. Oh man, I'm, I'm, this is tripping me out. Yeah, I people have got. I don't want to be fast, but fucking hell. People have oh, yeah, got really good well. at this game. Yeah. I don't know a lot about this game, but the one thing I do know is that this game gets crazy. Do get crazy. I can't really say much. Ooh, I oh, four. that was a whole ass combo right there. If he didn't tech, he would have been dead. Ooh, yeah. I get destroyed. Did we do a Magneto shit? God. This game is cool, man. This is right around the time when Capcom was firing on all cylinders. Like Bear said, like... They were doing outrageous things, and they were doing them with quality. Yeah. Serious. It's and it wasn't nuts. for nothing. Because, like... Banger after banger after banger. It was nuts. Absolutely. Because they were trying to compete with SNK and show, like, look, it's not just it's not just about Street Fighter. Because, you know, SNK... One of their big things, you know, Fatal Fury was kind of ex-Street Fighter 1 staff making their own spiritual successor than that. Interesting too, because this is around the era when SNK was just trying a whole bunch of weird stuff too. Wait, am I crazy or did Art of Fighting come out first? Um, I think Art of Fighting came out before this. Or do you mean before Fatal Fury? That's a good yeah, question actually, hold on. Before Fatal Fury, but after SF2. Definitely after SF2. Uh, I came out after Fatal Fury. Ah, uh, well so. Yeah, Art of Fighting was 93, Fatal Fury was 91. Wait, they look 90. Ooh, shit. Yep. It was really on Street Fighter 2's heels. Ooh. Maybe they're working on them at the same wow. time. God damn. Alright, so also. Shout out to Lightning. Also, uh, Kajak, top four is double limb. I don't know if that's. So far, that's been working out. But I'm always open to feedback because I'm kind of just copying what other people are doing with this, right? So if people prefer single limb for that top four, I'm down to change to that. For future tournaments oh side note just i love this stage to bits yeah it is the best stage in this by far like they're all really good it's just this one is by far the coolest to me i'm not sure if it's the best but it's fuck it oh just this the burning yeah. on the entry man it's so sick 
The fact that it's on your sprites, like that little detail. Yeah, it's it's, so, it's the only thing I'm sad about is that they don't have a a pallet shift mid fight, so it looks like the 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 robots are like mm, yeah, oh, that would know, be wild, falling, like they're it's, burning, you know. That I would have wonder been sick. if like the switch mid game is possible on this hardware. It uh, probably is, right? But they do oh, use a no, separate pallet. Like, they do use um, a separate pallet for the uh, underwater stage, which is really cool. Mm. I'm pretty sure that's what those have been found. I'm pretty sure. Look, but yeah, uh, fun fact. Uh, you know Darkstalkers 1? Oh, uh, yeah. Whenever you get electrocuted in that game, technically you're using an entirely different palette. Mm. So it's totally possible. Uh, uh, that makes oh, sense. Such a cool game, dude. This game has so much style. It yeah. really bums me out that Capcom went really hard with the world of Armored Warriors slash Cyberbots. And then they just never touched it ever again. Yeah, and they even had like the uh, in Puzzle Fighter, uh, Devilot is like, you know, you've never heard of Cyberbots as Capcom's number one game. And it's like, you guys can't kind of take that dig at yourself if you're not using it for something. That feels kind of cheap, to be honest. <laughs> I don't know the whole um, the the corporate culture of that company got very strange, like right after all these games came out, and I don't think they ever really recovered from that. Unfortunately, mm. Mm. I get that. All right, um, this is gonna be Kaido vs. Illuminati. God, this this game and Red Earth, they they pain me, man, because they have so much potential. They have so much potential, it hurts my soul. I would love to see another Red Earth. Actually, hot take, and no one's going to be happy about this, and I'm sorry if I bring heat, but uh, I'd rather see a new Red Earth than a new Darkstalkers, if Capcom's making it. Honestly? Here's the thing, right? Because, like, I yeah. Because, uh, I mean, first of all, like... You can go underwater. Yeah, this is the stage I was talking about. You can see the difference already. Uh, but the the big thing with like Darkstalkers is that they they've made you know three games in that series plus the two bonus ones that kind of don't count because they're the same thing. Uh, and they've they, you know those those are peak sprites. Those are peak gameplay in like Vampire Savior or th the third game. But like Red Earth is is so untapped. Like a lot of their other series too. Yeah, that's where I, I was like, going with it. I feel like, like you can say the same thing about, like, you know, Plasma Sword, or... I guess Star Gladiator was, like, a sequel to that, but that still feels like there's... They could re-explore that, they could get back into rival schools now that they're, like, acknowledging that as part of their Street Fighter shared universe thing going on. I'd like to see a lot of that stuff get acknowledged, but even if you, like, take the, the Plasma Sword um, comparison... You know, that was a game you could, go, you could buy on PlayStation and Dreamcast. I don't remember which one was on which, but... Like, Red Earth was like a game that was, like, unplayable. Like, you could not play it unless you found an arcade machine for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Especially, like, in its prime. So... Like, there are people that don't even know that that game exists. I have to wonder, like... I remember like... Me, and the, me and the lads, we got... We lost our absolute minds when the anniversary of this was. It's just like... Red Earth Dark! It's been 20 years, like, you know? Yeah. yeah well, like, I got introduced to Red Earth from Capcom Fighting Jam, and that's not the way I should have been introduced to Red oh, Earth. Oh, it is not. <laughs> yeah. If it means anything, I think me too, honestly. Yeah. No. It was that and Mugen. He's so sick. What is Actually, Red you, Earth, you know what? Uh, since they discovered that, like, debug two-player mode in uh, Super Punch-Out, I wonder if someone will ever find that in, like, Red Earth. Maybe that kind of thing's lurking. Sadly, I've I've looked. If it exists, uh -huh. I can't find it. Yeah, I guess that's. Ooh, ooh, good stuff. Believe me, if it existed, I ooh, I've I've, I've looked. Yeah. Um. Uh, if nothing else, um, I made a Lua script that lets you play through the animations, and I found some of them that are, are seemingly unused, which is kind of cool. Yeah, that's so, really hey, interesting. Yeah. Oh, oh nice, yeah. As if uh, 
if you hang out right in the corner there, Lightning still can't quite hit you unless he moves forward a little bit. That's like the, the really interesting thing about this game is like, it's not that you can get into like a stalling position that they can't reach, it's just that they gotta, they gotta advance from their corner to hit you. Oh. Imagine one of these in widescreen. Damn. <laughs> Be another game that gets uh, kind of nerfed in widescreen. Because a second yeah, impact. Be interesting. Second impact has like a native full widescreen mode that some stuff doesn't work in because it's supposed to like wall balance you and it doesn't. Uh, I know what you're talking about. Ooh. Yeah. Yep. That's why they ended up not using it, right? Yeah, yeah they. They tried, but they just went, oh, fuck this. Okay, gets though, a throw. Like, I think all of the SF3 games have a widescreen mode. I know about the, the second one had like a finished one, but it was that goes unused, and the third one has like a semi-finished one, or it might have those two backwards. I don't know if um, Vanilla Street Fighter 3 did. Maybe Ooh. it did. This Ooh. pressure from Lightning, though, yeah. Once... Once you get to pretty much like a, a clean hit on the ground, he can pretty much loop this situation where like he puts down the missiles and you got a block. I love the little detail of like when you one of the rounds, it shows like little heads up things saying like which part of the robot is damaged. I'm just like yeah. that's cool, man. That's so sick. Oh yeah, you've got like the booster down, the arm part down. Yeah, that's sick. Oh man. Such a cool game mode. Honestly the whole idea, like with the UI and everything, how each robot has its own um life bar and whatnot. Because you know mm -hmm. they're made by different manufacturers and stuff, I imagine. Like all of that is really interesting. I love that. That's such a cute little detail. Yeah, it like really brings you into the experience, I feel like. Totally. It's Absolutely. just like, yeah, this this is this is me, like this is my bot that I'm controlling right now. I can't get over how fast this game is. Because, like, you play it normally and it's fairly fast, but, like, this is not. Oh, this is people at the peak of fun. knowing how to control their machines. Yeah, exactly. It's like, there's a lot of little touches. It's like, when you land, you can, you can boost right away. Uh, and just, like, keeping track of that gauge. These players are fighting... They're fighting like I imagine a mech battle in this universe would canonically go. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's that's awesome. It is pretty sick. Side note, man, I love this stage. Honestly, I, I love all of the stages in this game. I think my favorite has to be Volcano. Yeah, that one's pretty I don't nice. Know what it is. I, I just I'm, fuck with it. I'm a big fan of the city just because of like how many little things uh, animate when you destroy them. You've got oh, like the definitely. bridge, you've got the road, you've got the building that's the most obvious one. Mm. You've got like, uh, I think there's like a little, like, like, little trucks or something and you can destroy them. Yep. Oh. I don't know. Yeah, there's time really ran out there. E even with like the timeout in this match, uh, it was still a constant action. That's a beautiful thing. Mm. Definitely. Because, yeah, if you're not there's repositioning yourself, it's, it's really easy to just get overwhelmed. Another thing this game has in common is a timer. Ooh. The timer goes down fairly quickly, so timeouts are not. They're not. It's not like you never see them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you practically never see a timeout in like first strike. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's something like you have to embrace in this game actively. Mm. Ooh. I remember. Nice. I remember getting into Red Earth and basically never having timeouts happen to like having like four of them happen back to back i'm just like fucking hell what's happening? Ooh. yeah that sword hit was huge oh now they have the corner Ooh. now they don't <laughs> good chase though oh yo what's up sarvitz glad to have you tune in man oh we got some bits in the chat good. hell yeah yeah cyberbots is sick no joke, this actually is Capcom's best game, I feel like. 
I guess, you know, it's it's hard to compete in people's eyes with like Marvel and stuff, but man, this game is sick. It is sick. It is very sick. It was just this era of these games, like when they were just firing on all cylinders. Like this is around when the AVP arcade game came out, I believe. And like yeah, everything was just top notch. You really if you like fighting games, it's impossible to choose a favorite, I think, from right from right around that time. Oh, yeah, dude, God. the movement it, it's mind blowing. Like you see people review this game uh, when it came out on like consoles on Saturn and stuff, or you, even you see them, you know, reviewing it on the collection now, and they kind of they don't get it. They don't really, you know, it ends up feeling clunky to them, and it does if you like jump into it like Street Fighter. But once you see all like how quickly you can boost, you know, how quickly you can stop, it all comes together. Man, and the charge cancels too. I love that the loot does that. I think. I think I saw like uh, one of the Japanese players doing that first with Lightning's uh, 2L, and that's that's hell useful because it's it's a low unlike most of the 2Ls in this game. So just like right away conditions used to block low, and then he's got that overhead jump L to watch out. I don't know if this is. Like Capcom's best fighting game, but man, it's a fucking quality one. I think we can all agree on that. Yeah, for I sure. The momentum keeps shifting so quickly, keeps it even exciting. Stuff, even stuff like the music. Nobody brings up the music. This game is a really good soundtrack. Yeah. It's genuinely one of my favorites on the CPS man, too. One of my favorite uh, tracks from this game is actually like on a stage that doesn't normally show up in verses. The uh, I think it's called Colonial Satellite or something. You're just like scrolling through uh, like a city on a satellite. It's really sick. Oh, nice combo. That's going to do a lot of damage. And this is, uh, oh, that's 3 1 for Luminati. All right. Uh, I want to say that was kind of an upset, but again, they uh, they were been playing so good this tournament that almost feels like a disservice, right? But I, I've always kind of held Kaj Kajak in high regard because he knows a lot about this game and he he has no problem teaching people. I I mean, no one does. Everyone who's in this game really just wants new people to pick him up, and that's always readily apparent. It's happening right now in the fight Kate lobby. People are God, like, you know, yeah. how do I do this? How do I do that? And they're all discussing it, and that's fantastic. I want to see more of that these games it's awesome all right next up this is going to be uh losers s91 versus og cornflakes notice og cornflakes dude he's he's been like following my stuff playing in tournaments and he's just all around a swell guy i played him in like in this in Karnovs, and sam show dan Kuga, whatever you name it he was a double uh, dragon right i i actually don't remember he might have been for all I know. I haven't played Double Dragon in a hot minute. I think that's where I remember them from. Yep. Alright, so winner of this is going to have to play Kajok, and winner of that will have to play Luminati for Grand Finals. I'm honestly really glad Lou ended up uh, fighting his way into Grand Finals, because like Lightning, uh, a lot of people see him as like kind of a weird and consistent character. Because he kind of has to get going to really be scary. Like his neutral is a little awkward, but he's been playing it just so cleanly. All right. Yeah, trade to start it off. Oh, trade. oh, he he lost his arm too because he was charge canceling that. That's the thing. It's, it's really fun. We ended up getting a top four where it's like all kind of heavy hitters, you know. There's no uh, Helion Super 8, which no one really plays, but Super 8's another annoying stally robot that has like eight uh, eight jumps. Because obviously like eight, he's an octopus. Uh, oh, I get it. Yeah, they got eight of everything, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, ironically, like the actual bot designs only got six legs if you look closely, but... <laughs> You have to really look closely because it animates like eerily smooth. It's kind of fucked up. They just uh, they just saved on two arms to use them somewhere else. Is what they did. Yep. It's very smart resource management. And I do appreciate too that we have all the uh, 
robots that like violence in the top four instead of the flying to the up back. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if we're gonna see uh, Kajak Vice again, because, but it would be really funny if that ended up coming out. Problem is, like, he's gonna be coming from losers anyway, so he definitely doesn't want to take any risks. But we'll see when we get there. All right, lots of trades happening right now. Yeah, one thing I really like that OG Cornflakes does is like he'll do a pressure for a bit and just back off and kind of wait for them to swing, hoping to catch something. Yeah, kind of dictating the pace, trying to see if they can catch them fighting out of it. That's the thing too about this game, it doesn't seem like it's um... Like you're not just chilling back and waiting, you're not just rushing in, you're constantly going in and out and messing up the um... Trying to get into your opponent's flow, you know? Yeah, you're like, it's racing footsies is what it is. You're just, you're going so fast. I feel like even right there, it's like, let me act like I'm getting out of the corner and then dash back so that they back up off of me to try to catch something that's not happening. Yep. Ooh, nice. But yeah, it's always a little frightening to see Reptos hovering at you up like that, because... He might be, you know, he might be getting ready for a command throw. Oh. Yeah, he's just letting these DPs rip because they're going to chip out. Oh, all right. Oh, OG uh, with a throw. Managed to get I'll the throw. This. I'll say this. He did fucking fantastic under the pressure. Yep. Uh, it's also really helpful that most of the bots in this game have a throw on uh, your light attack. A few of them don't, but obviously those throws are a bit weaker. You can match out of them. You don't see that often in fighting games. Yeah, throws on a light button because it's because it's normally like kind of fucked up. But in this game, there's like a lot of ways out of pressure and like. Even know. having something like that where the throws are of different strengths. Mm -hmm. Like you can mash out of the light one. Yeah, it's genuinely balanced. A lot of games with like, uh, you know, super turbo, you at least have medium or heavy. A lot of games would kind of just go with like just your heavy button. Sometimes even like just your heavy punch specifically. But yeah, in this game, you've got lighter heavy throws. Uh, yeah, Kendrick making a good a point. You can't throw while you're in a dash. You got to stop your dash. I mentioned that before with uh, Reptos with the air throw tech, but that's like a general rule of the game. All right, good jab check. Oh yeah, that miss tech is bad. I feel like Reptos has just one of the better punishes for missed techs after like, I don't know, maybe Vice. Just because he gets that command throw, TG. Oh, dang, he gets clipped Good by catch. the laser there. Mm. Fired. That's, yeah, that's 1-1. One, one. Shoutouts to Jin's dad. Good job pushing him to the corner. Yep. Cornflake is going for a lot of these like higher jump L's to possibly air to air. That's kind of a gamble in itself because if you get blocked like too high up, you'll often get thrown. Oh, nice, good sweep. Oh. Oh, the, sorry, the cross under into instant air dash of light. My god. Yeah, he he loves doing that, and it, it, it gets you, like, almost every time. Don't blame you. It would have caught me. I'm not going to... Yep, same. Ooh. Yeah. 
It's actually really unique of Blodia. Like, a lot of characters cannot chain into their sweep. They can chain into their standing heavy, but... Blodia, one of the few characters who can go into uh, crouching heavy from any from his lights. Main character privilege, I'm telling you. Real. He's got a really interesting kit. Like he's not just uh, playing the Ryu of this game. I don't really think there is a Ryu of this game. I don't really think about it. Yeah, Gates is kind of like a parody of Ryu, but he's also not good. <laughs> <laughs> That block string. That was a cool block string. So baffling. Like it's it, well, not baffling, but it's so blowing my mind how quickly you move across the screen. Like you're never safe. Yeah, there have been a few moments where like cornflakes will like you know do weapon charge cancel. He'll get caught by something because rep toys moves that fast. Oh, could you imagine playing this? Like having a fight like this on the actual hardware. I'd love <laughs> to see it. Yeah, Saturn did have Akuma, the Akuma of this game, literally Akuma. <laughs> it's it's great. He looks really that, weird. Like after after our first of three, you could just hear the CPS two like. Oh yeah, they, like, you, like, know? you would like light the cab on fire kind of thing. Yeah. Oh my god. Very sick though. God, Ryan yeah, that Steve, literally in the last second of that game too. That's crazy. They could come back though. It is first to three. See if they yep. adjust. If they over till it's over. There's definitely some wiggle room here. You know, this is an interesting question. There is oftentimes lag depending on which stage you're for CPS2 games. Is that also true for Cyberbots? Uh, as far as I know, it isn't. I just just because I yeah. feel like if there was, then we'd hear about it, but. Kajok is in the chat. He's like the expert on this game. Do you know if there's stage lag? I'm I'm I don't mean like a lot. I mean I mean like I don't know. I don't know. That like there are some stages in some of the CPS2 games yeah. that like there's so many background objects and all that sometimes like I, I do know I like, that's a fact. I do know yeah. that's true in like Super Turbo Alpha 2. Uh like Kajok's saying now that he's noticed. Alright, fair enough. Because mm. I mean yeah, there's no Chun Li stage here. I gotcha. <laughs> Which game had the Chun Li stage that lag? Uh, Alpha Two, because it had all the bikes. Oh, the bike, yeah. all part of the plan. Chun Li says, "Oh, you want to fight me? Come to my home turf." And then she just hits up all these dudes on bikes. Like you got to, you got to slow this down for me. And. He's been really good sets and really close too. It's not like it's not like S91's not pulling his weight here. It's just like oh, oh nice man, no punish on the super, but it's it's always kind of scary because it's active for like the whole little uh, you know baseball slide he does. It's still active. Mm. Probably just didn't want to risk it. Yeah, I mean the funny Ooh. thing to do is like land on it and block. And then he'll just do the whole combo. That Man. Is funny. I love OG Cornflake's confidence. Even if it ends up getting him killed, it's just like, you know, even with that little life left, he's still approaching just the same. The tenacity. It's very admirable. I like seeing that. He yeah, exactly. I find that if you keep playing like that, it probably benefits you better than if you start being like, oh man, I'm about to die, I need to you know, ease up a bit, need to rethink. Because then that's when, like, you know, you're not ready Ooh. for it. You're not prepared. All right, there's that Ooh. Raptor super. Oh, oh, the... Did oh, they fall no. out of the last hit? That was weird. I, Why I guess that there's, there's all sorts of ways that super can connect, to be honest. It, it very rarely does like that. That's strange. Yeah, I'll definitely have to keep tabs on that. Watch that back and see why that happened. The, the good thing about fight kick replays is you can just like load up the hitbox viewer lua and stuff. I've done that before for like Dan Guga, where it was just like, all right, there was some weird cross up that happened that I got I I can't reproduce.
Yo, what's up, Moon Master? Another long time friend, like, you know, poverty fighting game supporter. Hmm. Who's another person? I was saying, like, you can pop in any random game and they've probably played it. Oh, okay, this, yep. And with the timeout, OG Cornflakes takes that and S91's out of the tournament. It was really good showing, time. though. Like, again, you can't, like, feel. None of these sets have been that one sided. They've all, they've actually all been three ones in this top four, which is really funny. Everybody's been slugging. Yep, S91. Yeah, like monsters. <laughs> S91 representing Brazil well. Thank you for coming out and playing. I think he's entered every single one of these uh, bi weekly tournaments, which is really nice. And yeah, we're going to get into Kajok versus OG Cornflakes. Well, Master says that they want to learn this, but they've never touched it. Well, now's the time, my friend. Yeah, there's a good wiki. People in Discord are very helpful. Uh, yeah. We've got like Japanese regulars in here too. Like I, I like to tag uh, K Doc or Kamogawa. He's probably the best killer B player in the world. I actually, to be honest, I don't know the Japanese scene too well personally, but it's very nice to have that connection. I just feel like it's a very mutual development there. We're like, I mean, we're mostly learning from them, but they're definitely learning stuff from us too. It's really sweet. Mm. Oh, yeah, there's that blocked air DP that you gotta watch out for. Oh. Oh. Yeah, Kajak trying to get something started, but he's got so little health left. So yeah, for anyone who might be getting lost, OG Cornflakes is blue. Thankfully in this game, it, it's actually kind of convenient. Uh, the pallets are like locked to player one and player two. Oh, so oh, the player two good. side's always going to be blue, for example, if they do a yeah. mirror? Yeah, exactly. Dang, nice punish. I feel like a big asset for Blodia is having relatively simple and high damage punishes. Like, you'll do, you know, light, heavy, uh, 2 and 4 H, and that'll do maybe 40%, depending on their defense. All right. Oh, Seeing the switch to Swordsman. Oh man, this offense though. Woo. Okay. Swordsman does have a little more defense. You can take a few hits, so that's gonna help Kajak out a lot here. I mean, it's working out right now. Yep. All right, doesn't Put get down the a little bit of zoning. Wanted. Got him right with the command grab. Yeah. That like. That drill, uh, jump to H, is really useful. It's got three hits, can cross up. It's got pretty low block stun, so it can usually set up for tick throws pretty well. Oh. Aw, oh, man. Uh -oh. Gets up. By the, yeah. the baby toe. Yeah, Swordsman's main strength is just that he can cover all these really weird angles that some characters have trouble with. Now, the, the interesting thing about the mine, which is exclusive to Swordsman, uh, you can actually like hit it with attacks to destroy it, but again, committing to that in this game is kind of weird. Right. Uh, Probably what Swordsman wants you to do to it. Yeah, sometimes it ends up working out. Other times it's like, you know, you he, he throws one out and you like hit it with jump L and you keep going. And so in some situations you kind of can ignore it. And the hitbox is definitely not as tall as the electricity makes it look. Ooh. That, but that yeah. was dramatic. Fuck, actually. 
You gotta be you gotta be careful to not rush in against this character sometimes. Oh it's nice. Just, I love the start of that. You have to be careful not to rush in. Gloria, I'm gonna pretend I didn't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sure. Alright. Um, yeah, like right there, he just stuck out JL and ended up hitting the uh, mine without thinking about it. So sometimes the strategy is just to like, place it just it far enough in front of them where they just, if they dash, they're going to end up hitting it. Nice. <laughs> Round start mine. All right. Yep. There are basically, two big things this character can do: Round start mine or mount Round start five uh, L. Because it's just this quick sword swipe. It's it's still fast. It's like five frames, which is pretty fast for this game. Normals in this game are like not quite as fast as Street Fighter, which is interesting, considering how fast the movement is. In fairness, characters spend the vast majority of the time in the air, so I guess their normals being slightly slower than Street Fighter doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, because like, you yeah. just move around so fast that it just sort of compensates. You can do the, uh, the, the boost, not the boost, the, um, the charge cancel, right? Yeah, that's so like available I wonder if, on most normals. Yes, yeah, so I wonder if that was intended so that they could encourage people to use the canceling. Mm -hmm. Very possible. Cause like you don't you don't apply a system wide cancel like that by accident. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then you definitely don't not catch it in testing and leave it in the game. Yeah, it's definitely there on purpose. I just wonder like what what the full applications they want it to be. Cause it's like you can use it to send out these like low commitment projectiles and the balancing factor is you know, you get hit out of it and you lose your arm. Hmm. Being without your arm is like a big deal, but it's also easy to pick it back up. It's a volatile thing. Ooh, nice. Yeah, you see how much range that has for like just your standing light. Oh, apparently it wasn't intentional, K Jock says. Also, they said that while playing, how? Or the names. No, the names are right. Wow, okay, I can't do that. <laughs> Just type in the Twitch chat while I'm fighting for my life. That's wild. I unless unless like our fight gate is weirdly delayed, that I'm my mind's blown right now. They're just that good. I don't know, maybe he's got a roommate on his account. <laughs> maybe there's two K jocks. <laughs> Anyway, lovely Ooh. talking with you. I pick up my bones. All the best to everybody. Have, Have a good, good one. night, my friend. Alright, take care. All the best, dudes. Thanks for hanging out. Alright, that's uh, 3 for OG Cornflakes. <laughs> well, gaming. Need cyberbots. <laughs> I mean, same. Uh, <laughs> Who does it right? Dang. All right, this is going to be Luminati versus OG Cornflakes. What does the uh, the bracket look like right now? I had the um the other one. I don't have the. Oh yeah, the I just I add uh, T four to the end so you can find that pretty easily. But uh, this is gonna be grand finals actually. Oh, never mind then. Yeah, let me just just this once show the match. You know, I mean we've we're already you already know how it is. You can see it on stream. Uh, One fifty dollars is mind blowing for this. 
Uh, I don't imagine I'm going to see a lot of tournaments with that kind of a prize pool, but that means top three is being paid out. And we're actually doing a 55, 30, 15, just to like, just to kind of make it a little more worth it, even for third place. So we'll cover out like what the payout is at the end of this. But the winner's going to be getting like, what, $80 or something? So that's pretty big. $80 for playing video games. It's not bad. All right. Uh, let me see. I got the right sides. I hope they haven't started without me. That was my bad. Oh, man. They hella did. I missed the whole ass perfect. <laughs> God damn it. My bad, y'all. All right. Man, and, and lose coming from winners too. This is going to be a hard hill for OG Cornflakes to climb. But those of you who are listening will notice I didn't say impossible. I believe Nothing's in them. impossible in this game. Ooh. Just when you just pop an arm off like that. That wasn't an arm, that was a satellite thing moving backwards. Never mind. Oh, he did lose his arm at one point, but... God, there's there's so much. If you're not used to the game, yeah. I still, I do feel like they really... They just really designed the sprites well to kind of... You know, make the bots stand out from each other, even with all the stuff moving around. It's actually wild how well animated all of this is, like... Yeah, exactly. Lodia has like that one punch where the arm comes out and has like the chain gun around it and everything. Like, it definitely doesn't feel like they just grab stuff and slapped it together. Which is wild because it's kind of what they did. <laughs> oh, yeah. So player one can sometimes like cross up player two in the corner like that. Oh, this has um, side specific things? Yeah, a little bit. It's. It's kind of weird because sometimes the cross ups, like, it's not really a cross up, but you end up standing behind them, so weird stuff happens. Is one yeah. side just better than the other, or is it like, um. I think, I think 1P, it's like technically only one player can cross up in the corner, and that's about it, but, uh. I mean, even then, a lot of that stuff is, like, not too useful so it's like whatever you probably don't see a lot of opportunities for that to happen with them flying around and whatnot yeah because you can see all these like all these cross-ups that get like uh that happen mid-screen where you like you jump over them you boost backwards and like hit the jump l or whatever that lightning does that a lot it's oh man he's he's stuck without his arm you can't pick the arm up while you're doing the recovery roll. Yeah, you have to actually be up to do it. So it's like, and so that forces them to like roll in towards it too. Just like having that for yourself is a really good position to be in. Oh, we do have triangle jumping in this game, huh? Uh, yeah, a lot. Uh, it's actually interesting. I don't know if uh, OG Cornflakes is doing it on purpose, but not teching has been throwing off Lightning's Oki timing quite a bit. Hey, look, if it benefits the player, it was all part of their plan. Yep, you're right. It, they were doing it on purpose, they know it. Oh man, this is so close. Yep, spending the burst. Oh man. Oh. Yeah. That's the thing, you wanna, you know, use your missiles or whatever weapon to get in, but that leaves you vulnerable. It really like brings out the best in fighting games, because it's like everything can cover so much space, but is also a relatively fair commitment. I absolutely agree with you. It's uh, fundamentals right there. Yeah, and I mean, I say that, but then you've got, like, Vice, who gets the option to select his command grab with his air normals, but whatever. We're not going to talk about that. Yeah, yeah, well, Vice isn't here right now, right? Yeah, exactly. We don't worry about Vice. Vice is Vice's own problem. I mean, you got to worry about him in this game, but 
<laughs> yeah. But here right now on the uh, the exploding volcano next to the Cybertron ship, we don't got to worry about Vice. Yep. Yeah, BST is just boost. Everyone's got a different boost design on their heads-up display. It's really cool. I don't imagine we'll be seeing any like surprise character switches. But if we do, I can point that out. I don't... Ooh, nice. Good snipe. I don't think oh, I've seen... Ninja just hates vowels. <laughs> I, I don't think I've seen Lou play any other characters, but who you don't need to, right? I feel like most of the cast in this game is kind of equipped to deal with every matchup. That doesn't mean there's no such thing as, like, good or bad matchups in this game. It's just, like, when you can do Oki like that, all that matters is, like, how much will you have to get in. mid-air footsies right now. This is wild. Yep. And it's funny, like, Blodia has, you know, two boosts in the air, Lightning has one. Uh, the only character that has three I can think of is uh, 40, which we haven't seen this tournament because he's kind of an awkward off-meta pick. He does, like, a similar high-low game to Lightning uh, and has homing missiles, but he's small, He's takes a bit of extra damage and is just not played very often. Yeah, 40 is cool. I want to play him more, but then I like see the clips of him struggling to deal with Hellion, and I'm like, you know, I don't know. 40 is that small robot that um does all the weird spins and stuff, right? Uh, yeah, he's got the one like dashing heavy, which he just turns into a ball. That's the one. Yeah. I think I tried 40 once in a mystery bracket, and it was just not clicking for me. Yeah. The main thing is you can cancel, yeah, Kajak Singh Faithful Hounds. That's like the, the nickname we got from uh, another one of the Japanese players' videos on Vice, where the homing missiles were called Faithful Hounds. Because <laughs> that's really funny, because they, they do follow you pretty well. On the, the characters have a different version. It's QCFW, which shoots out four of them instead of two, and they follow a bit better. Oh my god. Yeah, with that OTG, Lightning's going to take it. So that's, uh, score is 1-1, one, one. no, 2-1 right now, my bad. Alright, 2-1. OG Cornflakes wants to get right back into it. Pacing them down with those missiles. Yeah. Man, I, I gotta link the uh, Vice video I'm talking about after this. I just feel like the delivery of it is so matter of fact, which I really like. My favorite kind of delivery. Like a very yeah. deadpan, matter of fact, dry. A lot of people don't pick up on it, especially like on online stuff, but when yeah. it comes through, it comes through hard. It's, it's just like, you know, opportunities for extra damage. Uh, I think, like the video says, yeah, sorry, expectations for additional damage. Uh, and then capture and end. That's like the last bit of it. I really like that. But yeah. Uh, oh, good trade for OG Cornflakes. Yeah, you can, you can see how hard he's fighting for this. Because this is going to be the bracket reset for OG Cornflakes if he can take it. Yeah, I was about to say, one round away from a reset. Ooh, yeah, cross up into tick throw, that's nasty. You got another patient grab. Chase him back to the mid screen. Yeah, they want to reset this whole bracket. They got a half a life bar to do it. I believe in cornflakes. Good defense on that burst there. They got this. Yeah. Kajak pointing out dash under Giga Crash is real important. Yeah. 
There's a nuance I haven't covered yet. You can't block behind you in the air. So if they get under you in the air, you can't block that. And that's really important in some matchups. It's it's like a little downplayed in the uh, hover bots just because like when they hit their hover in the air, they'll turn around automatically. But sometimes you can still find those spots. Oh, yep, the DP. Here we go. can always expect it. And that's, yeah, that's a bracket reset. That's 3-1 for OG Cornflakes. All right, we're gonna need all of the players to file back into Fight Cave. We're resetting the entire bracket and starting over. Yep, more cyberbots. It's what you guys wanted, right? Yep. Uh, all right, no, that's three one. Uh, God, this every single set has been okay, except for that uh, last set with Kajok. Every single set here has been three one. I don't know what it means, but right now it means more cyberbots for sure. Some Riddler shit. Psst, yep. Coded message. Unfortunately, I'm illiterate. <laughs> uh, all right. So are they? They're starting up the next set. Yep. There we go. Yeah. These dudes have no chill. Nice. Oh, they're okay, here for violence. A... Oh, sick burst. Oh. Yeah, the burst does count as a special, so it does a little chip on its own. Oh, nice. Good pick up there. Oh. <laughs> It's it's pretty rare you see that like thunder shower move. I don't know if that's what it's called, but I'm gonna call it that from now on from lightning. Ooh, yep, gets a light throw that time. All right, I think Illuminati may have woken up a little bit. You know, not that he wasn't like on his A game before, but he's on his S game now, is what I'm saying. Yep. They said I gave you the bracket reset, not giving you any more. Oh. Excellent movement with those missiles again. Yeah. Ooh, nice. Yep. That was Chip a sick combo. Out. Yep. I think that was a combo, actually, but yeah. Oh, okay. I thought that they, um,. Yeah, it happened so quick. Chip damage isn't that high in this game for the most part. It's like a little bit for each hit, but at that point, like, yeah, uh, OG Cornflakes teched and he had to he had to block, and I think he was blocking high, expecting that tri dash to come out. Oh, nice going for that wheel in the air. That's actually a charge move. Uh, charge is relatively fast in this game, and it's just charge down, so you can sneak it into a lot of situations. Now that spike girl's a special move. That's basically his his best combo ender, I think. It's his most consistent one. Ooh. Yeah, Lou put another one up on the board. Yeah, he damn. We can barely talk over this the way he's moving. Yeah. <laughs> Who's here for violence? Yep. Uh, w is weapon. A is arm. So your arm is basically like a stun gauge. If you think about it, when you get hit, it goes down. It also instantly, uh, you know, falls off if you if you're charging and you get hit. Yeah, I agree, Chris. Thunder Shower would be a pretty excellent super robot attack name. It it just fits, you know. I'm actually gonna look up what that's called because all that is on the wiki. Uh the name for this one. Oh, Thunder Rain. I, I, close enough. I think Thunder Shower is a little better. Uh, it's more phonetically pleasing. Yep. Right. God, they're neck and neck right now, but Lou does have full meter. Lightning actually can combo into a super. It's a little tricky. I think it requires like a dash attack to do. And it's also a pretty good asset for chipping out.
I think in general he prefers to like use the burst just for the anti-air potential. Yep. And yeah, uh, logic. If you're looking and you see like every time Lou shoots that weapon, those missiles, he'll like consume the whole meter, and I'll be without that for a uh, like a few seconds. Dang. Uh, that you was know, a convincing win. Dang. I mean, don't sell yourself short, OG Cornflakes. You had to make that bracket reset happen, so good stuff. But, yeah, fighting yeah. the grand finals and resetting the bracket is freaking impressive. That was that was a hell of good grand final set. That was that was fantastic as a spectator. Yep. All right. Let me enter it, and we'll finally be done with this tournament. Now I say that, but I mean this was thrilling from start to finish, and it. I think it completed in a pretty pretty respectable time frame. It's been like two hours ish. Yeah, that's ideal in my opinion. This was a lot of fun to spectate. Hell yeah. So actually hold on. Let me I did want to put this video on stream for once. So let me let me do that. All right, this video is so good. This is how to play Vice 101, pretty much. Oh. <laughs> there it is, Faithful Hound. This, this video Faithful is comedy. Hound. Like, you don't even realize it, but you see captured and end, and it's just like, yeah. <laughs> really be like that sometimes. And I mean, Killer B is like a low defense character, to be fair, but that's that's how Vice plays against pretty much everyone. All right, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna raid, and anyone who is in like this top this top three, make sure you sign up so you can get paid out on the match. You know, I'm gonna link that here. That was the original name used for charge canceling. Oh, bumping up in the monkey. What? I don't even know like which post that's from, but yeah, I believe like Google Translate would make that up. <laughs> uh, that's fantastic. Dang. Who is streaming right now? I'm gonna go through my channels and see who I can raid, because I always want to throw it over to more fighting games if I can help it. Absolutely, that's what it's all about. Support the uh, homies. Well, all right. Uh, I'm just going to rate to BBH because he's playing Galaxy Fight right now. Uh, he's not like playing on Fightcade or anything. He's just doing Neo Rank Masters where he uh, ranks all the Neo Geo games in order. Let's go. Galaxy Fight's an interesting game. It's yep. the uh, Waku Waku 6, if you will. Alright, I'm going to head out. Thank you for having me tonight. No problem. Thanks for being here. And thank you everyone for watching. Bye-bye, everybody.